What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a meta analysis for the August 2020 format. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but we really haven't had too much going on in the online environment. That was until we had the recent release of Rise of the Duelist. And after that, we had plenty of online tournaments to take place to gather data from. And now I can bring you guys a video today of how those results turned out. We can look at some deck lists, see how the meta is gonna be trending and what you can expect moving forward for the next few weeks until we get the Mega Tins and Dragon Dragoon of Red Eyes ruins everything. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first tournament I want to discuss was the Luxury Championship Series 5. These results are typically the most prestigious, the most premier results out of any tournament in the online environment, just because of the sheer density of top players that compete in these events. And there's also cash prizing on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the breakdown of the overall participants, 100 to be exact. Even though the player count was low, there was some very good competition in attendance. And as you can see here, I think what stands out the most at the bottom of this picture is the sheer amount of Dogmatica representation in this tournament. 38% representation were playing some sort of Dogmatica based deck or incorporating Dogmatica into their other strategy. Now we'll go more in depth with this a little bit later on, but you can even see here, just looking at the top out of the 19 Eldritch that were in attendance, 17 of them were Dogmatica Eldritch, which is absurd. There was also other strategies such as Ad Emancipator and for Noble Knight, and we'll be going in depth with each of these throughout the video. So let's go ahead and start off with the winner of this event, which surprisingly was actually Dragon Link. So Dragon Link is a deck that we've known for the past several months that is a very strong contender. There was actually an FDK not too long ago, which I did a video on if you want to check that out. The FDK has kind of fallen by the wayside because players now understand how the FDK works. They're a little bit more prepared and uh, knowledgeable on how to combat it, but that doesn't take away from Dragon Link being a a very solid deck. Dragon Link is able to assemble very powerful boards going first, and it can easily break boards going second just because of how powerful the rocket monsters are, because of how powerful the synergies are between that and the Chaos Dragons. Chaos Space from Toon Chaos was a huge boon to the set as well. You may notice that this list isn't really playing too many new cards out of Rise of the Duelist, and some of the players who may have been playing these Dragon Link strategies might have felt comfortable because they've been practicing for several months and know that this is the deck they want to play, and sometimes it's better to play a a deck that you might not necessarily know is the best, but you're the most comfortable with just because there's less room for error. And when it's a combo deck like Dragon Link that is able to just win games left and right, I don't think that's too bad of an option. One of the other nice things about Dragon Link is that it's able to actually incorporate a pretty decent amount of hand traps since a lot of the combos kind of revolve around one or two cards. So that way, even if your combos don't go through, you have some defensive cards to stop your opponent if they happen to be on a strong combo deck as well. So congrats to the person who took first place. There was also a third place finish for Dragon Link as well, which is incredible considering there's only like four or five in attendance for the tournament. And so I'll quickly show that list as well, just so you can see kind of the contrasting decision making on the deck building. We see there's a few more new cards in this third place list here. I believe it's actually a 60 card list, but nonetheless, still taking third place and first place is a feat in itself. And I think this is definitely going to make Dragon Link a little bit more popular moving into the rest of this August format. But then coming in second place, there was a deck that just rocked the entire event. And I'm not talking about Ad Emancipator. I'm making another rock joke because that is Megalith. This was piloted by Lundra T. I actually have already done a deck profile with him discussing some of his card choices, explaining how the deck works. So you guys can really understand how cool of a deck this really is. It is actually a ritual based deck. And a lot of the uh, Megalith ritual monsters have built in ritual summoning mechanics in them. So you don't necessarily need to have the ritual spells. You still need to have the tribute fodder as all rituals typically do but it's a very unique strategy and a very unique archetype and the cards are actually very good the archetypes cards are very self-sustaining and either replace themselves after they've resolved their effect or are able to generate you advantage when they do hit the field and that's good for keeping constant card advantage which is important especially for a ritual based archetype but if that weren't enough this deck can do way more than meets the eye because this deck is able to pump out boards that are able to summon something like Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity on your opponent's turn, which basically locks them out from doing anything. We all know how powerful those cards are. And then you can just OTK on the following turn. And if that weren't enough, there's also a card Megalith Bethor, which is able to pop anywhere from two to about eight or nine of your opponent's cards with one single effect. And so you can imagine that is a pretty devastating effect if you're doing that during your opponent's end phase, if they just set a bunch of back 
macro. So congrats to Lunderty. I think it is an incredible feat that he was able to take a deck like this all the way to second place of one of the most premier tournaments in the online environment. I think we're definitely going to see a massive surge of this deck on the online ladder just because it's new. It's a deck that people may not be too familiar with and people do love ritual decks if they are playable. But I have my doubts when it comes to Megalith's long-term sustainability. And the reason I say that is because people weren't prepared to play against Megalith. People didn't know what the Megalith cards did. And so as a result of that, the deck was able to get away with a lot more than it otherwise would. And so now that it's made its presence known, people are going to actually read the cards. People might actually side deck cards for the deck that also can have utility against some of the other top decks as well, so that if they encounter a Megalith player on the online ladder, they're actually going to be prepared for it in some way or another. This deck can easily fold to something like Droll and Lockbird, which that may not be good against other decks, but if Megalith does start to surge in popularity, people are definitely going to check against it in the side deck especially, and that might tone it down just enough to be able to kind of put it in its place, but still a really cool deck to see nonetheless. But then coming in fourth place, we have Synchro Eldritch Dogmatica. If you thought Synchro Eldritch was degenerate, well, just wait till you see this abomination. So this is really cool because we get to see the Dogmatica cards in action here. I would say a majority of the Eldritch Dogmatica decks are most likely going to be very control heavy, but this player decided to play the Synchro package as well, so you can just completely win the game for no reason if you resolve Jet Synchron with no disruptions, and you also have the ability that if you do get interrupted, you can then just fall back on your Dogmatica cards and set up more negations that way, so that way you're not just left in the dust. Then you pair that with the fact that the Eldritch is some of the strongest control package that we've seen in this game's history, and it is a very, very well-rounded deck. There's still so many different ways that we can take on a deck like this when it comes to just playing Eldritch Synchro or Eldritch Dogmatica or maybe some other variant. Who knows? But I love the experimentation here because we don't know what the best version of this deck is going to look like yet. We've seen in the OCG that Dogmatica Eldritch has seen some success, but I don't think we've seen Dogmatica Eldritch with the Synchro package. And who knows? We'll see in time what the best variant is, but this is still a pretty cool list nonetheless. And so congrats for getting top four. Then coming in at top eight, we had Adamancipator. We already know Adam Emancipator from the previous formats and previous meta analysis. I do want to say though there are some unique inclusions, one of which being Miracle Rupture. So Miracle Rupture is basically a foolish burial for rock monsters, but there's an old card called Revival Golem that will then special summon itself out to the field if it's sent from the deck to the graveyard, giving the rock deck yet another extender, which is really, really powerful. There's also Kawaki Meru Supplier, which is another card that basically just acts as another extender for the Ad Emancipator deck, just what the deck needed right? More extenders. But it's cool to see that even Ad Emancipator is adapting to the way the meta is shifting, and it's still the most powerful combo deck of the format, in my opinion, but we're going to have to see what other changes it's going to have to make now that it has new threats to contend with. And then we have the new combo deck of the format being Infernoble Knight. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what this deck does, it's basically a warrior combo deck that you're able to just turbo into a Zold as quickly as possible, and if you go completely uninterrupted, you're going to end on a board with multiple negations, but but you're also able to rip cards out of your opponent's hand with a card called Smoke Grenade of the Thief. This is a very old card that now has a home in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Whether that's good or bad, we'll see, but it is still a very, very powerful combo nonetheless. Now, it's a deck that still definitely needs some fine-tuning. A lot of players were trying it out because it is a new combo deck. TCG players love to play combo, as we know with Ad Emancipator and all the other combo decks we've seen of the past, so it's pretty unique to see. People are probably also happy to play Azold again because Azold is one of the most powerful link monsters ever printed, and it's really cool to see Noble Knights actually not sucking for once. And then wrapping up LCS5, I have a couple more Dogmatica decks to show you, the first of which is Invoke Dogmatica. This just kind of reminds me of like a plus one Fire Fist type deck because every card in this deck just seems to generate so much advantage on its own. This deck, while it may be very streamlined and simplistic, it is very powerful, a very strong control deck, and a deck that a lot of people are probably going to navigate to if they want to play something simple and just control the game state as best they can. Then we also have a Dogmatica Eldritch deck that made the top eight as well. Again, this is not playing the Synchro package, kind of more focusing on the control side of things, but a different take compared to like Invoked, but just shows the flexibility of some of these Dogmatica cards. Expect to see this deck everywhere as well. So now I want to touch on some other tournaments that took place this past weekend, the first of which was MBT's Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. He had 120 
38 players. And while it may not be the most competitive tournament, that's still a very reasonable turnout. But the main reason I wanted to discuss this was because Jeff Leonard took first place going 11 and 0 playing, you guessed it, Mystic Mine. Mystic Mine is back, baby. When you have a format just flooded with combo decks, Mystic Mine getting slapped down and resolving is all you need to win the game. I think it is so incredible that Jeff is still going strong. I did a deck profile with him. You can check that out on the channel if it isn't up already. I'll have a link either in the corner or down in the description, but congratulations, Jeff. You did it again, and this is a very incredible feat. The other reason I wanted to discuss MBT's tournament was because the second place winner was once again Megalith. Yes, I'm not joking. Megalith not only took second place at the LCS, but also another 100 plus person event. This was actually uh, someone that Lunder T was working with, Recape. Actually, someone I featured in, uh, I believe, one of my Crush Card Cup tournament series videos, as a matter of fact. But they've been working on this Megalith deck together, which is why the decks may seem so similar at the surface. And they've been playing the deck for several months. So they knew that they were coming into this ready to win it. They both came so close, but again, Megalith, second place. Maybe there is something to this deck after all. Something else that caught my eye was that there was a tournament in New Zealand that was playing a 3v3 format, and I wanted to showcase just the first place list for this really quick. Uh, guess what was in the first place list? Yeah. Megalith. Megalith again making a top cut appearance. Is there actually something to this deck that the rest of us who don't have 200 IQs don't understand? This list looks fairly different than the list that we saw from Lundrity and Recape, but still a very, very incredible feat seeing Megalith have such a huge showing just after the first weekend of post Rise of the Duelist format. And then the other two decks that took first place were Sky Striker. Sky Striker still going strong even for the past several month, so it's really no surprise that it managed to take first place in yet another smaller tournament. But then we also have Synchro Eldritch. This deck is not going anywhere. Eldritch has its tendrils buried deep in so many different archetypes right now that you can expect to see a lot of Eldritch for the next several weeks. So guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap up my meta analysis. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.